Hello, welcome back to my podcast. And today I have here a new guest uh, called Nicole. So Nicole, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. What about you? Yeah, I'm fine also. I'm so happy that you are here today with me. And I really I'm so happy too. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. And I really look forward on your Egyptian story. So could you please somehow start where your story begin in Egypt? Yeah, of course, I had to take a voluntary project there in 2018 um, for seven weeks until February 2019. Okay. So I was there like seven weeks and it was amazing. In first place, I didn't want to go to Egypt. <laughs> I had to, to go to another country for do my voluntary job. I had to go to Colombia. And my father told me, no, it is so near to us. You can go, um, I don't know, in an easy way. Mm -hmm. So why not Egypt? And I was like, no, I will not like the culture. I will not like the people. Uh, you know that I don't like when a man have a bad treat with a woman. I will be like so angry all the days. And he told me, yes, for it, you have to go there because you need to open your mind and see that all of these things that are in your mind now are real or not. Mm -hmm. And so you will understand a new culture, uh, learn about a new religion. So yeah. I said, okay, okay, I will go. <laughs> and I was there. And the first thing that I noticed was that the Egyptians are always late. <laughs> That's true, actually. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of them had to take my pickup in the airport and they arrived like two hours late. Mm -hmm. And it was winter, so it was so cold there. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, after it, I really noticed that they are also so kind. Because when I was in my way to my host, mm -hmm. I saw the Nile and I said, oh my God, it's the Nile, it is so beautiful. And they stopped the um, car in the middle of the street and say, okay, dear, go and take pictures. And I was like, no, you can't stop in the middle of the street. And they say, yes, we can. And so second thing that I noticed that they don't have care driving. <laughs> True. Yeah, uh, but they were so kind. They tried to make me feel at home there. So I was my first day there. I meet people from different countries. And another thing that happened to me was that we went to a restaurant and I couldn't understand the menu. Yeah, of course. Uh, it was all in Arabic, right? Yes, exactly. We were to al Park and there they had like some uh, food shops and we buy a pizza there. We just say pizza and we didn't ask for anything else because they yeah. couldn't understand us. Oh my God, it must be horrible for you <laughs> just to eat pizza. Okay, but yeah. um, you know... You and know, after it, uh, I start to meet Sorry, um, I, I was in Cairo. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. I was in Cairo. But I also visited another cities. Okay, okay, continue. Sorry, I skipped to your speak. No, don't worry. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, after it, I started to meet um, more people, and I really noticed that they were so kind. Yeah, like are. now, yeah. I consider that I have a family in Egypt because all the guys that I meet were like my old brothers trying to take care of me all the time. Like every time that I need some of help, I call them and they were always for me. And it is something that I appreciate too much. Some that I didn't know how to do or like that in Egypt was how to say hi to some 
one because in Latin America we are like really effusive. We were to tell, hug them, like kiss them in the face. <laughs> and when I arrived to Egypt, I was like, should I hug them? Should I give my hand? Just say hi with my hand or just hi? And it was something that I didn't know how to do. Yeah, when I see yeah. the city, was like, okay, all the people in Latin America are wrong because they thought that and talk that all is like just the pyramids, uh, sand, desert, and nothing one else. Yeah, <laughs> and and I started to take pics and uh, put like funny text in my pics, telling. Guy, uh, guys, see, this is Egypt. They are not just the pyramids and things like that. And I try to show how Egypt was. Another uh, fear that have some people that I know before to, uh, I go to Egypt mm -hmm. was like, um, there is really dangerous. They, you will find terrorists in all the places you will be like all the time uh, taking care, uh, sorry, taking like care of your life. And no, it is a country must secure where I was. I know some countries more, but I never feel safe like in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Yes, it I agree is... with you definitely. Because look, I'm from Europe, okay? And in the Europe, we always say Egypt is so dangerous country. It's everywhere. Even on the, all the media say this. They are terrorists. They will kill you. You are the foreigner. But when you come here to Egypt, I am the same as you. I feel like a home and really safe. Exactly. I never feel safe like there. Yeah. Also in my country, I feel more danger in my country than in Egypt. Exactly. It was one of the reasons because because I wanted to go to live in Egypt. I thought about to take my master there to live there because in all my life I feel like a little of danger walking in the street, the harassment in the street by the men. But in Egypt, no, I didn't feel that. Some people told me, as you are foreign, you will uh, feel harassment in the streets in Egypt. And it is all a lie. I didn't feel it in any time, no. Yeah, I There was, you. yeah. And I feel also that some, some girls feel that, but it is because they are not like accurate to the situation in Egypt. I know that Egypt is a um, place where the people have a different culture, they have different cultures, I feel like safe and some of the girls that didn't have a good experience as me yes. uh, was because they didn't respect the culture, they didn't respect the things that are in very place, I don't know, things like that. Exactly, but, I agree with you because most of the girls who complain or who are in touch with me and tell me the bad stories, mostly the girls doesn't respect the culture or doesn't have any information about Egypt. And they think they are in their exactly. own country. They can do whatever they want. That's the big mistake. Exactly. Yeah. I thought I have a lot of friends there, girls and boys, and uh, I don't know. I think uh, I think that I uh, talk with them about different things. And one of my friends that uh, went already to Egypt two or three times. I can't remember. Always told me, no, the Egyptian women are like so mean they treat us i don't know as we are their enemies or things like that and uh, she told me it also about about one of my friends mm -hmm. and i told her no she is not like that she's so kind she always is really kind with me her family too about the egyptian a mm -hmm. uh, girl that i know, yeah, you and... know the, egyptian, the egyptian woman uh, they are a little bit very difficult, let's say, because they are jealous of us, you know? When the Egyptian woman see the foreigner, she treats her very nice, but she is very jealous, to be honest with you. 
Yes, I know that. Mm. I noticed that with some girls also. Yeah. But when I talk with my friend to what, what happened with my friend from Bolivia, she told me, okay, we were in a national event. I'm in an organization and the name is ISEC. I went mm -hmm. with them to Egypt. Yeah. And, and she told me we were in the national event. Uh, I think that she was the only friend here. And we and the event was was in a hotel with pool, and she took her bikini and go into the pool, oh. and all the people didn't do that. Yeah, and yeah, and I don't know, we didn't like that because she tried to take all the attention with all the people there, and this is why we couldn't talk too much. I don't like the people that like to call the attention, and I was oh dear, I understand you, yeah. and I don't know. <laughs> mm. I think that it could happen in every country, not just there. So yeah. I think that the people that in not enjoy Egypt or don't you know, like it is because they do things that aren't allowed there. Mm, exactly, I agree with you. Okay, uh, let me ask you, so if you had such bad information about Egypt, why your dad actually didn't think so? Why did your dad let you go to Egypt? Why I do don't want to go to Egypt? No, why your dad, your father, why he like uh, push, push you to go here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, um, I had like three options, Mexico, Colombia and Egypt. Mm -hmm. And all my life I always wanted to go to Colombia because, I don't know, I always wanted to go there. <laughs> okay. okay. And, <laughs> and the time that I had the opportunity of the voluntary job, I talked to my father, Dad, see, I can go to Colombia to do a voluntary job. And he told me, and this work is only in Colombia, no, also Mexico and, and Egypt. And he was okay, and why not Mexico or Egypt? Mm -hmm. And I was, I don't know, I want to go to Colombia. <laughs> and he told me, no, you have to open your mind. You just want to go to Colombia because it is similar to us, the culture is similar to us, and no, mm -hmm. yeah, do something different. Yeah, your father is actually a very clever man, I guess. Yes, uh, and when I told it to my mom, she told me, no, 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 Egypt, no, it's so dangerous, they are a lot of terrorists, no, you can't. Yeah. And die if you go there. And my dad was no, it was it is not like that. And I can remember that when I was in Egypt, there were like an um, accident near to the pyramids that mm -hmm. a car explode with some French people from Asia. I I think, and my mom was so so so. I don't know, worry about it. She called me, she was like, are you okay? And I was like, yes. And this day of the accident, I was in Alexandria. <laughs> wow, good. <laughs> it was your luck. Yeah, and I told to my mom, I'm in another city, don't worry. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, I think that I, and there are some, some mindsets that are in the people mm -hmm. about some countries. Yeah, of course. Okay, what about the Egyptian food? Do you like it? Did you eat some? Yeah, I love it, it. Really? What exactly do you love? Yeah. Okay, I will be a little described. Um, I won like 10 kilograms in Egypt. Oh, <laughs> <It's> <laughs> too much. Uh, it is because I don't like too much the... Um, uh, things with sugar, like cake, some, some like that. I don't like it. Mm -hmm. But when I arrived to Egypt and tried it, it was the best that I tried in my whole life. Yeah. So I think as my body, in, it was not accustomed to try all of these things, I won all these kilograms. I love it, the omali. I think that is my favorite one. Omali? <laughs> Yeah, oh my. Yeah, yeah, yes, I, I tried it, but I couldn't. 
Oh, it's yeah. very easy. I can learn you. I have the recipe from the Egyptian, so I will write you after in private message. It's very easy. Thank you. I will be <laughs> so grateful. <laughs> but I okay. Agree. Uh... <laughs> Go, yeah. on. Go on. I. I try it also koshari yes uh, i cook it here and it was like the same it is not difficult to do just a lot of ingredients mm -hmm. for sure. the recipe um what else combella i love yeah. it to eat combella in cairo they told me that there are like different even in very in every city and you can find the same always yeah, this too is even with koshari. For example, koshari in Alexandria is totally different than from Cairo. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> like, the two cities are really different. Like, from each city, it even if it's the same food, it will have different tastes. Oh, yeah. And maybe yeah. it is true. And it's the same in my country with some uh, receipts and things like that. Uh, I also try kunafa. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's my favorite one. <laughs> it's my love, kunafa. <laughs> yeah, I tried it one or two times in my way to Aswan to Luxor. Mm -hmm. And it was like really delicious, but I didn't try it again. And some things more that I can't remember the name. Uh, the thing that I didn't like is something the Ali liver. I didn't like it. I hate it. <laughs> oh, it's in Alexandria, isn't it? But I don't know how in Cairo. I didn't eat it in Cairo. I cannot compare. Uh, no, it happened that in my country they eat it too, and I don't like it. <laughs> and when I was there, they gave it to me. And I hate it too. I hate it in all the world, I guess. <laughs> I don't like the taste. What about makshi? Do you eat makshi? Uh, no. It's the national Egyptian food. You have to see it. It's like rice and some like green leaves. No, I think that no. No? Mm. no. It's pretty, but I don't like it to be honest. <laughs> I will try to eat more things the next year if I can go, inshallah. Really? I had to again? go. Yeah, I had to go this year in August for my birthday. But because Corona, um, yeah. all was cancelled. Sure. I already had one of my tickets for go there and I had to cancel it. Mm, I'm sorry for it, but I hope I can meet you if, if you come. So write me and we can meet. Yeah, of course. I want to know Alexandria a little more because I just uh, went to the citadel, mm -hmm. uh, the library, the catacombs, yeah. and I think that it's all. I didn't know a lot of things. Mm, we have a more thing. No worry. I will show you after you come. <laughs> Meshi. <laughs> okay. So. Um... Okay. I have to ask you, you are actually a Muslim or not? No, I'm not Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a, another random fact, I guess. Before to go to Egypt, I was like, yeah, Catholic. But I don't know, I was so away from God. Mm -hmm. And when I went to Egypt, I more near to God, I guess, because the people there show me how God influenced in our life. And it is the same reason because I love to say, inshallah, if God wants, or things like that, because I think that it is so beautiful. Yeah. Um, I never consider myself as a religion because sometimes happen that I'm not, um, I don't accept some things that in some religions do. So I was a little confused about it. The only thing that I can tell you now is that now um, I'm more near to God. Now I more grateful to him for the things that I have. And also I didn't feel the peace that I feel when I was in a mosque. I don't know. I think that it's so beautiful. And I, 
I already think about to change to Islam, but I'm not sure if we're a hijab or not, but I thought about to change my religion. Very nice. So take, like, give yourself a time, you know, don't be in a rush, like study the religion more and if you like it, go on. If not, it doesn't mind. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and I have to also ask you, did you experience some Egyptian romance, some love? Yes, I had an Egyptian romance. He was okay. not Muslim. He was like Christian Gothic, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I don't know, it was like so beautiful. I never had like a these special dates with someone in another country. It was like something so special. I think like some people say it, the old love. <laughs> um, he came to where I was living to take me for the place where we have to go. And he didn't let me pay neither the ticket of the bus, nothing. And it was a little weird for me because I'm not accustomed to these things. It is like in my country, my parents always told me, okay, if you will um, do something or go to any place, uh, please, you have to pay your part. Don't let that another person do that. Yeah. And when I was in Egypt, it was a little bit weird for me that someone wants to pay all for me. It was like, oh my God, what is happening? <laughs> and uh, like we went to eat pizza one night and I said, okay, you uh, buy the pizza and I will buy the Coke. And he told me, no, 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 I will pay all, don't worry. And I don't know, I didn't feel like... I don't know, it was weird. <laughs> yeah, I understand too. I had the same feeling when I was for the first time in Egypt. Because we are the same like you in Europe. We have to pay everything for ourselves, the woman, I speak about the woman. We have to be like independent, not dependent on the man at all. Exactly. And um, do these things different or that happen uh, in a different way is like weird. <laughs> you don't know how to react. Exactly. But on the other side, when you stay in Egypt for longer time, so then it's very comfortable for you and you get used quickly, I guess. Yeah, we were like together in Egypt and the first four weeks uh, I was there. No, five weeks we were just friends. Mm -hmm. And two weeks before I came to my country, uh, he told me that he wanted that I be his dear friend and I, I accept and so he was like so kind one day that he had to cancel the date because he had to help uh, his mother uh, uh, I don't know next time he gave me a gift for cancel the last date and <laughs> I didn't have so like that before and we were in a distant relationship for five or six months, I guess, when I came to my country. And we finished it because he didn't have a lot of time for talk because we had a lot of things to do. And also I was a little bit busy with the university finishing it. Yeah. And he told me he told me like two or three months later that he wanted to fix the things with me i said that yes and i think that he was um with another girl well i was thinking it really i sent him a message that he betrayed me and a lot of things but just days ago i discovered that he didn't <laughs> but you know the like a distant relationship is always hard. It's take a lot yeah. of trust and time and patience. It's not easy to be honest. Exactly. And also the difference of the time was difficult for mm -hmm. have uh, for a true uh, call. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, sorry for to hear it, but maybe when you come to Egypt again you will find a new love. <laughs> yes, maybe. 
Don't worry. We will see what happens. A lot of things can happen. Yeah, of course. We never know what will happen. Exactly. Okay. So then I ask you, what's your best memory from Egypt? I think that Christmas. I <laughs> thought, really? yeah, yeah, my friends made it really special. I oh. thought that as we were uh, would be in a different country without my family with for first time it would be really difficult. I saw I will miss my family, I will be sad. And it was not like that. I didn't notice that I wasn't without my family in any moment. Uh -huh. Um it was near to spend my Christmas in a bus because we were returning from Luxor to Cairo. But I don't know what the guys do, but made that the bus go faster. We arrived to Cairo and they were like uh, preparing a party in Afaluka. Uh -huh. And we were like there with friends, we dance. They like give us some gifts and I don't know it was really really special different to all my Christmas but they were like a family trying that we feel really fine there yeah. and oh. another special memory that I have is when I went to the hub before to go to Egypt I started to search about what can I do in Egypt and I saw the hub and I said okay I have to go to this place and I to I have to practice diving there <laughs> And I did it and I really love it. It was like the most beautiful sea that I saw before. Um, like the water was really clean. You can see all, you can see the fish, you can see all. all. I really love it. Yeah, I agree with you. It's always very beautiful. But also really cold in, in, in winter. Yeah, of course. The Egyptian doesn't swim in the winter at all. Yes, but as I really wanted to do it, I went to swim and do diving there. Mm, very beautiful. Okay, and what's your, like, a bad memory? Do you have any bad experience in Egypt? Uh, when I climbed the Sinai Mount in St. Catherine, mm -hmm. It was like something that in a first place I think, okay, it will be easy. <laughs> hmm. um, when I started to climb, I said, okay, maybe it will be a little difficult. <laughs> when I was in the middle, I said, I think that I will not do it. I can't more. There were like uh, less four degrees mm -hmm. or less five. I can't remember. It was really cold. And we climb all the night. Oh. We, yeah, it was like so, so difficult for me. Also because when I went to Egypt, I had a problem in my hands. An excessive uh, wearing, uh, wearing. I can I don't know how to explain. <laughs> okay, and when I was in cold places, I had like a problem. I, my hands was really cold and it hurts. So it was more difficult for me. Mm. When I was in the final, just some minutes, I said I did. And it was one of the things that I learned that maybe it looks impossible, but nothing is. Impossible. And when I arrived to see the sunrise, I was really happy. Yeah, it had to be very beautiful, the sunrise. Yes, really. And the support of my friends, uh, come on, Iggy, we can do it. <laughs> and yeah, I was, yeah, we can't. But I really have a lot of pain in my hands because of the cold. Yeah, but it seems that you have a lot of fun in Egypt, that you really like enjoy it to be here. I really enjoy every moment. I think that maybe I had uh, some bad moment, but I think that all of these things we were hiding for the good things. So the measure of the time when someone asked me about Egypt, I think that I never told something negative about this country. Yeah, Egypt is a beautiful country indeed. Yeah. 
Uh, but let me ask you, um, did you know how to ask you? Do you think that Egyptian women are treated badly in Egypt, like as slaves or really bad? Um, I di really didn't think that. As I saw how my friends treat her mothers, her sis his sisters, um, or one of my friends, well, some of my friends that are already in engagement, I think that they trade there really good. Of course, that's in every country, I imagine that are some Batmen that can trade uh, their wife, but, but in the cases that I saw, no. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of respect for the woman in their families. Yeah. I think that it is one of the things that I, I like it the most because I think that as a man treat uh, her mother, will treat you. And if he can respect her, he can respect you. When I had like outings with the guy, uh, when I was, uh, he like had a lot of respect for her mother also. Uh, his father uh, was not more here, <laughs> he did. Um, and he always take care of her sister and her mother. And I think that is so beautiful. Also, they are so good with the kids. They like really love the kids. I saw like how they treat their, um, I don't know, um, the kids that they had around, the kids in their family, they take a lot of care about them. Yeah. And yeah, and I saw also how they respect their friends. One day we were talking, I can't remember about that. Uh, one guy from Brazil asked about how to, uh, how to say some bad words in Arabic. And my friend told him, I will tell you, but not with girls here because we have to respect them. And I was, okay, it's in my country, not happen. <laughs> they doesn't matter if they are girls or not. Yeah, I agree with you. Okay, so my last question actually for you today will be, do you have some advice for other girls who want to visit Egypt? Yes, have an open mind, have to, how to respect some things and don't judge before to know the reasons. For example, I had like a big mindset about the uh, metro that they have like a space for only women and I told, oh my God, what happened with them? Why they can't be with the men? And at final, I understand that it was not bad. They were trying to give uh, to the woman like the privacy to maybe uh, can take out the hijab and I don't know if it is in bad or and not in order so they are giving them a space and as the as these things i started to understand more things mm -hmm. but some people try to close their mind and just see the negative things yeah. and you have also to take respect of the culture, of the costumes, and the religion. To, you are going to another place. They have different things. They do the some things in a different way. And you have to start to respect that and try to do the things as they do. Not because you don't have personality or you are French, you can do the things that you want as you want. You have to respect always the place where you are going. Yes, I absolutely agree with you, Nicole, really. You are a very wise woman. Thank you very much, you too. Okay, Nicole, you are actually out of the time. It's about half an hour now. So I have to finish it, but I really thank you so much for this podcast and that you share with me your huge experience about Egypt. Thank you so much. Don't worry and thank you too for this moment. I really love to talk about my experience there and that more people go there and know this beautiful country. Thank you so much, Nico. Okay, have a nice time. Bye. Have a nice day.